Welcome to the first online Tashkil talk. My name is Lisa Borlechka. This is the start of a series of conversations we'll be having with creative practitioners who live and work in the UAE over the next few weeks. We'll be broadcasting weekly, so follow us at Tashkil Studio and check out our other platforms on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. Today, we are talking about creating from home. So let's welcome some of our Tashkil members from as far away as Dubai and Sharjah. First up, we've got analog photographer and jewelry practitioner, Poras Zakan. Hello, Poras. Hello. We have all the way from Sharjah, jeweler Noura al -Sethal. Hello, Noura. <laughs> And we have graphic designer, Aman Darwish. Hello, Aman. Hello. And finally, last but definitely not least, the beautiful fine artist, Jahan Ali. Hello, Jahan. Hello, how are you? Hi, fantastic, thank you. Lovely to see you all. Um, let's get started with a very simple question. Um, how, how are you creating at home? Do you have home studios? Or are you using your kitchen table, your balcony? Um, how are you creating that creative environment? Mm. Horace, do you want to go first? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I very much miss my dark room at Teshkil. <laughs> so I think that's a good starting point. Uh, but in its absence, I've had to adopt and uh, create, well, a dark room of my own. So luckily, Dubai now has everything you need to be able to develop film at home. I've had to get creative with some of the chemicals, but um, I've, I've just sort of closed off, I've got the tanks and I've been shooting analog um, photographs and developing them at home. So it is possible. Excellent. Um, Jahan, how about you? Yeah, well, good afternoon. I hope you're all well. I miss you all at Tashkil and I wish you health and safety. Uh, my home is uh, my temple. I still create as an artist from home with whatever is available and from different parts of the home, not just the studio, the kitchen, upstairs, downstairs, all around the house. <laughs> Amazing. Aman, how about you? Uh, so honestly, before the lockdown, I had like a set routine where I would get to work on my freelance projects in the morning, the shkid on the evenings and on the weekends. I had a set time for the gym, uh, hangouts, so on. So I had the space, time, and location for each activity, but now I'm working from home as we all are. So I don't have a studio room or anything. I'm working from my bedroom, which is a great thing, actually. It's not that stressful. I get to like um, set out the day however I want. Uh, so yeah, it's been nice. It's just the only issue is that I get up, I, I end up working all day long. So. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a challenge. I mean, these new yeah. routines that we're finding ourselves in, um, they are a blessing, but they're also a challenge for our own discipline as well. Um, Nora, what about you? You're posting uh, quite a lot of interesting photos online. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So basically, I so once I came back, I had to. I came back from London in like August. I had to kind of find a space at home. So what I did is that I took. We have this outside, outdoor kind of medulus that I transformed. I literally just took it and I was like, no one's using this, so I'm just gonna use it into my studio. So I started buying like chairs and tables and things that I would need from IKEA and I didn't really much spend my time here. I was usually in Tashkil working. So now I'm like revisiting, I've been like revisiting like old work that I've done like maybe um, 10 years ago. And it's been, it's been interesting kind of transforming the space as well. Yeah, but it's cool, yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. Well, we'll be, get, we'll be talking about reviving old work later on. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is, yes, the psychological effect, really, of creating in isolation. You know, at Tashkil, we're a community. We're bouncing off each other. Um, whether we want to hear other conversations going on around us or not, they're there for us to interact. We all meet around the table at lunch and so forth. It's very difficult, like you said, Aman, having 
that um, discipline to work by yourself. How are you finding that? Is, I mean, it's challenging, yes, but are you discovering new things about your own practice or yourself? So I, I discovered that I enjoy two things. So first is being around creatives like, my, like myself, because it's in conversations with others that you get to get inspired, you get feedback, which is very important in the design field. You get to ideate, um, all that kind of stuff. And the other thing that I really felt like I, uh, I am missing is having that schedule that we talked about. Um, I like having deadlines. Deadlines are very important. I set those out for myself. But when you're alone and working under such circumstances, um, it's very hard to stay focused and uh, not really get affected by your surrounded surroundings and letting it get to you. So I found that to be missing. Um, uh, Jahan, how about you? You've got, uh, you've got your family around you, which is wonderful, yeah. but also um, I'm sure it can be pretty distracting as well. Um, how are you coping with the creating in isolation? Is it splendid or is it stagnating you? Well, the isolation is very important. I, as an introvert, need it to uh, research and think and contemplate and create. And with the curfew, I'm not really isolated. Like you said, my family are around, my children are e-learning, my husband is doing his office job from home and I can hear all the phone calls and meetings. So yeah, it is challenging, but uh, I try to create my like inner, in my mind, my inner uh, isolation of like sur surrounding my sort of imaginary wall to like focus and get things done. Nice, nice. I love that. The, we're coming out with great bits of advice for people who are listening here. Um, Laura, what about you? Uh, well, it's been really, um, at first was fine. Like I, I, I used to come to the studio, but then I would beat myself up of like, why am I not reading enough? Like, I feel like there's a lot of like things that are happening on social media that you feel like you want to do more. But I feel I just started to kind of not look at news because I just can't see it anymore. And I feel like it's affecting me and my health. So I started just really trying to do one thing at a time every day. So if, if one day I want to focus on a book, I would just focus on trying to finish a chapter or two. So I try to kind of be, um, um, kind of fill my mind with other things um, and like other interests. And I started like, if I would go on like, like yesterday, I just went on the VNA, the Victoria Albert Museum, and they kind of have a collection that you can, you can check out. And, and I never really thought of doing that before. So I feel like now I have this opportunity to kind of research um, other areas that I wanted to explore, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. What about Poras? You're, you're on a boat, uh, so um, you, you are even more isolated than others because you're, you're not even meeting people in a lift. So um, how, how are you dealing with it? Well, I found that um, having unlimited time is a fickle muse, you know, it doesn't necessarily lead to more productivity. So I've, I've had to give myself sort of limited tasks on what uh, I'd explore and that's motivated me to do more in, in a very limited area. But from, from a sort of a craving that, you know, that interaction with other artists, I've, I've, I've actually learned that it's quite fun to share images on WhatsApp groups. I've created little challenges with friends and we'd sort of share images, talk about it. And that's, that's created a good, good bit of dialogue. I'm sure everybody's kind of uh, come out of this having stronger relationships with people they didn't expect to. Absolutely, and it's uniting us from all over the world as well. Um, there's some fantastic um, arts initiatives online, um, not just the virtual tours that Nura was talking about, but also, you know, calls and competitions and even online residencies now. But as you say, there, there's a lot of clutter out there, good clutter, 
um, but you've really got to um, be, be focused when you go on your social media. Otherwise, you could be there for hours on end, couldn't you? That's true. You, it's a free, it's deer in the headlight freeze and you, you know, there's just, it's overwhelming. There's, there are so many options, so many things you could do, but you know, nothing's changed. You can't do everything just as it was before. Yeah. You've just got yeah. to be selective. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Good point. What about, what about materials? Are we raiding our cupboards? Are we downloading new software on our laptops? Um, have we managed to um, get some of the specialist supplies? Have you been able to access that? Um, tell us about what you're playing with at the moment in, in terms of materials. Should I? Should I? Uh, okay. So from, you know, since it's developing film is kind of a bit specialist in terms of what you need, or so I thought, but I've actually been um, developing film with coffee. So that's, <laughs> that's been one of the interesting experiments. And I think everyone should try that. Uh, so as long as you know you've got sort of a, a light sealed tank, which you could get in Dubai. So that's been another lesson that we've actually got quite a lot of specialist shops here where you can pick up things. If anybody's interested in picking up a new hobby, you can get everything you pretty much need, either in your drawers or from an online shop in Dubai. So I've been, uh, I've been. I've been doing a lot of cleaning, as we all are, <laughs> and uh, I found that I have so many candles that I've forgotten about. So I was thinking, like, just leave my laptop for a bit, leave, leave Illustrator and Photoshop and all that, and let me play around, around with candles. So let's see what comes out of this. And uh, also, I got an iPad recently. So that has been, like, my friend for the past 20 days. Uh, I've been just like taking a break from projects and freelance projects and just drawing like whatever it is, uh, trying new brushes, new illustration styles, and just just drawing, just being playful. And I think that's important. Jahan? Yes, uh, uh, I had uh, like, uh, there are so many cleaning and sterilizing going on and the OCD levels are so heightened and I found so many erasers which I turned into stamps with my daughter and we started stamping cards and bookmarks and while also while watching Netflix I was like try something new uh, embroidery and textiles and I really like like how it's turning out so maybe I'll show that when it's done when it's finished I'll post it and there was like a study journal, which I had started at Tashkil, where I took one image, one simple image, the quince, and I wanted to try many different materials with the same image. And it was very nice because it's like a discovery book where there are things I liked and then there are fail experiments. And I think I'm going to bind them all together. And uh, I have conclusions of what are the new things I would like to learn after this is over, inshallah. Fantastic, you're all so positive, it's amazing. Um, Laura, what are, you, you talked earlier about sort of getting, getting hold of some specialist materials. Um, what are you working with at the moment? Uh, so I'm working with um, quite a, a different materials. Every, like every time I wanna work with something else, I don't know, I'm very like indecisive. But, uh, but I started working with, um, so I've always worked with wax, but this time I kind of, I am more of a risk taker now than I think before this whole isolation happened. I don't know how or why, but I feel like I, I kind of want to like melt wax. I started like melting wax and like jewelry wax, which is very like, you shouldn't breathe it. So, but I started like doing things that I'm like, I really want to like push it. And I think being in this isolation, you kind of want to um, push the boundaries of like how you kind of want to experiment with materials. So I started like melting it and pouring it. Um, and then I started working with plaster the other day, which I never really worked with plaster ever. So it was nice to kind of create like molds and, and also giving a time to reflect on my experimentation. So I would do things and then look at them and just try to understand why I did it also because I, I think we're in this fast pace right now where we're just really like reflecting as well, like reflecting on our practice and what we are creating, especially at this time, yeah. 
And you mentioned earlier, Nora, about revisiting some old work. Um, let's yeah. talk a little bit about that because all our cupboards and drawers are stuffed with unfinished pieces or pieces that we've just forgotten about. So how are you tackling that? Yeah, so I, um, so with that, uh, I really, I'm just like, I, I don't know why I've been um, opening my cupboards a lot and like looking at work that I did. So I saw even like journals that I used to write, like my sketchbook when I was in AUS in like 2011. And it was like, it's a, like a really long time ago. And I, and I realized that I used to love like writing a lot of like interesting kind of dialogues about design or art or, and I, I forgot about it. I forgot about all those kind of, even like I did, I, I remember like, I think a long time ago and like early, maybe 2000 and, um, I don't remember, it was early 2000s where I went to Tashkil and did printmaking uh, workshops and I still have those prints and I revisited them. I was like, oh, maybe I should go back to like doing printmaking a bit. You know, it's kind of, it's made me really nostalgic and really yeah, grateful for that time. Yeah. Anybody else want to throw in? I think it's definitely uh, a good time to archive you know, that's been sort of the guilt-free archiving time of finding all these negatives I haven't scanned, all these images that have never been filed properly. So that's been a real treat, I think. Guilt-free um, inventory dealing yeah, and getting and rid of old equipment. And just like Noura said, I, I've also been going through my old sketchbooks from back in uni and before that. And we all have those pages where we're like, ooh, that, that's an idea I could try. That's an, so I've been compiling those and maybe like drawing little sketches or like, okay, so this is something I could try once this is over, once the sheet is open again. So I, I now have a new sketchbook of like just ideas and things that I want to venture out and try. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, um, I, I wrote to Tima the other day an email. I was telling her it is art, what keeps us calm during these difficult times. And for me, every day I have to journal, even like I have to write my notes, I have to write my research points, I have to get all the ideas connected. So like, yes, in the future, we make more pieces when we go back to Tashkil and appreciate everything. Everything. At the end of the day, we are never gonna have this opportunity again, inshallah. But we are never going to have this opportunity of, of being alone at home for such an extended period of time. Um, so what you're coming out with, the, the ideas, wow, we're going to be absolutely packed when we open our doors. <laughs> That's for sure. Right? Um, in terms of what will you take away from this? You know, when we go back to some semblance of normality, which we will hope will be soon, Will you look back on this time um, with a sense of shock or how will you, what will you take away from this period, this extraordinary time that we're in at the moment? Mm -hmm. I honestly think, sorry Noura, <laughs> I, I honestly think uh, my biggest takeaway from this would be that um, it's okay to do nothing sometimes, it's okay to relax um, and that's exactly when you're gonna get to be like creative later on but it's okay to slow down it's okay to not be like your best creative self it happens and it's all right it's gonna be okay <laughs> who, who else wants to who else wants to sort of look into the future I think uh, one, one big takeaway is that I will never ask for too much time. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I think that that's a lesson learned that having infinite amount of time isn't necessarily a good thing. So um, it, it's, it's, it's been sort of, it's nice to tick that box now. I've had infinite time, time to get back to some semblance of reality. Yeah, for me, yeah, for me I think, uh, I shall not take anything lightly. Like I will appreciate everything and everyone and live the happy moments. 
I don't know. I think for me, it would be um, this time of like reflection and really um, reflecting on everything in life. Like I've been even reflecting on why am I a jeweler or what does it mean to be an artist, especially at this time. So I feel like I've been reflecting on the philosophy of making, the philosophy of us as human beings, like um, what do we want to say to this world? Like, how do we want to live our life in the future? I don't know. I've been like, I've been reading a lot of like, um, yeah, just reflecting, I think. Yeah. And building on what you just said then, Nora, it's actually a great opportunity to look outside our core interest of our specialization, jewelry, yours, or actually the arts and the cultural sector in general to look outside, look at science. There's a lot of scientific discussions going on at the moment and really sort of, you know, take, take into consideration their arguments, the rhetoric that's happening around us in other parts of society that we don't necessarily normally know anything about. Mm. That's very true, yeah. Like I've been very interested in like the human body and anatomy and like how the skin is kind of like this larger organ that kind of covers the human body. I don't know. I think it's because uh, the coronavirus is like it enters your body in a sense. I started thinking about the body in a, in a kind of like a machine, like an operation, you know, so it's, 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 it really makes you kind of like reflect on, yeah, your practice. The, within the bigger picture of things yeah anybody else got any other thoughts any other tips or pieces of advice for um, our viewers about creating at home before we wrap up i think it's um, my one one big takeaway is simplicity that you need very little to create and it's 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 been really sort of um, great to be able to appreciate that that creativity comes from within you know and i don't need much else so I think in this time it's a good time to create even even if you think it's not really something great and wonderful you may as well just do it because you've got the time and space yeah. well, another thing I wanted to point out as well is that I began to connect with people I don't know if everyone felt that as well like I started connecting with um, artists and trying to do like uh, stuff on social media but then also trying to like go on their lives and really like I went on one of the lives of um, um, a, a jewelry artist in Italy that I've never think I would have met but I went into his live and it was a really cool experience so I feel like we're really connecting at this time as well even virtually yeah and the challenge will be to maintain that momentum as we as we as we return to a new reality i think thank you very much Chorus, nora aman and jahan thank you for being a part of the first tashkil online talk <laughs> thank you so much for giving this this opportunity and making us be together and to get to see you after so long it feels awesome we should do this often actually like let's have hang tashkil hangouts tashkil yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> virtual coffee mornings with Tashkil. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, lovely. That would be lovely. Thank you so much. It was nice to see everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and before we go, before we go, please join us tomorrow for the Tashkil online quiz to play along at home. Um, and we'll see you next week, everyone, for a special edition of Tashkil Talks with mental health specialist Rima Baniabasi. So thank you, Poras, Nora, Amal, and Jahan. Keep creating, keep experimenting, and we'll see each other soon, very soon, inshallah. Bye. 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 Bye.